I know it's hard, but we're all having to say goodbye to our friends for the time being. Moving? Where to? The thing about being a soldier is that if your country needs you to go somewhere, you'll go. Think of it as an adventure, like in one of your books. Children, look. Our new home. Why do you wear pyjamas all day? The soldiers. They took all our clothes away. My dad's a soldier, but not the sort that takes people's clothes away. That one there, two there. This one. No, that one. <laughs> yeah. No. It's a work camp. They're in there because they're the enemy. The enemy? All you need to know about my work here, Bruno, is that it's very important to our country. The work your father is doing here is history in the making. Is everything all right? We can't find Papa. I'm a soldier. Soldiers fight wars. That isn't war! It's a vital part of it! We're not supposed to be friends, you and me. We're meant to be enemies. Dad's a good man. Of course he is. On the surface, The Boy in the Striped Pajama seems like another film conveying the atrocity of the Holocaust. This is in fact true, but when taking a deeper look, the film holds greater messages and themes as well. A very strong theme throughout the film is the idea of imprisonment. It is very clear that Jews are being imprisoned in the concentration camp, adjacent to the Nazi home. However, does the idea of the people under the safety of its roof being imprisoned as well occur to the viewer? The Boy in the Striped Pajamas shows the way people can find themselves trapped in a situation in which they believe they hold power, when in reality, such beliefs destroy them in ways more than one. The first example of imprisonment the viewer can see in the film is through the grandmother. She is constantly stuck between her family and her moral obligation to society. The viewer soon begins to sympathize with the grandmother as we see her make the tough choice of disobeying her family and son, and instead of going with what she truly believes in. As seen in the farewell party for the family, the grandmother, just like the wife Elsa and son Bruno, are silenced by the father and his need to assert his power. However, we also see how society wins the power battle from the unfortunate event that leads to the grandmother's death. This is a way the film shows how unlikely it was for someone to rebel against society during the time, along with the possible and likely consequences of these actions. The mother, Elsa, is a prisoner in her own home and skin. She is unable to do what she truly wants in life, which is to walk away from her husband and the awful crimes he commits on a daily basis. She is unable to leave her home and family, much like the Jews are unable to leave the concentration camps. It may seem as though she has a choice on whether or not to leave, however we are able to see through the way her husband reprimands her that she truly has no choice. How because I'm a soldier. Soldiers fight wars. That isn't war! It's a part of it. It's a vital part of it. The fatherland we all desire, all of us, you included, cannot be achieved without work such as this. The mother is also seen wearing stripes. This is depicting how she is a prisoner in her own body, unable to speak up for what she truly believes. The viewer is able to further understand the idea of the father's overbearing power, when one of the commandant's trusted lieutenants is kicked out of the army due to the revelation that his father is against the Nazi movement. Another situation where Elsa has to stand back and let him control. Elsa knows that if she were to speak up or even leave her family, she may be exiled and her husband could lose his job. Eventually, she breaks down and is unable to handle the stress. Her loss of sanity is made clear when she is shown swinging on the tire swing just lying there, swinging back and forth. She seems to have lost any feeling of power and clarity she had before. 
Bruno, an eight-year-old boy and son of the commandant, is a character foil for Schmoll, who is also eight. However, Bruno is a young boy growing up in Berlin, whereas Schmoll is a Jewish boy trapped inside of a concentration camp. These two boys seem to be extremely similar, just unfortunately born into different circumstances. Schmoll manages to find a small window of time each day where he and Bruno can meet at the border fence. The two boys quickly become friends, but do not realize that they are both trapped in similar ways. Bruno is able to fly around freely in his home, while Schmoll is caged into the barbed wire fence. However, on the inside, both boys are trapped in their naivete. Bruno, because he believes that Schmoll is enjoying himself in the camp, and Schmoll, because he is misled in his beliefs of how the, of how the concentration camp truly works. Shmuel is physically trapped behind the electric barbed wire fence bordering the concentration camp. Meanwhile, it may be that Bruno is indeed on the free side of the fence. However, the young boy is anything but free. Bruno is trapped behind his father, who happens to be the main soldier behind the everyday procedures of the concentration camp. Much like the Jews were whisked away from everything they had by the Nazi soldiers, Bruno was ambushed by his mother and father one afternoon when they told him that he was going to be moving away, away from his friends and away from the home in which he grew up. His parents, however, leave out the reasons behind why Bruno and his family move. There is a reason behind them withholding this information, as it also adds to the ongoing innocence that Bruno possesses. Bruno does not know any better, partially due to the fact that his family withheld vital information from him. He is a young boy who only wants to be able to be free and play with friends. Unfortunately, his one and only friend is stuck behind a barbed wire fence. As seen in the film, the only interaction that Bruno and Schmuel get is when they are playing checkers or talking, always with a fence between them. It is only reasonable that the two boys would like to be playing and running together on the same side of the fence. The viewer knows that Bruno's free side is where the boys should both be, playing and running free. Although the viewer possesses the knowledge that Shmuel is not in fact wearing pajamas or enjoying himself, Bruno does not. Bruno is further misled by a video he oversees his father watching and soon believes that the concentration camp is actually a fun camp where the adults and children play all day and eat feasts whenever they want. Organized sport is very popular. Those that don't play certainly enjoy watching. At the end of the working day, the centrally located cafe is the ideal place for friends and families to join together for a hearty and nutritious meal. The children in particular enjoy the pastries and cakes on offer. In the evenings, the occasional music concerts, either by visiting orchestras or indeed by talented musicians from within the camp itself, are always well attended. Other recreations include reading in the library, pottery, cookery, art, and horticulture. For adult and child alike, almost any activity one could wish for is available within the camp. This aids Bruno's decision to transfer over to Schmoll's side of the fence and put on a pair of these so-called pajamas, in an attempt to help Schmoll find his missing father. Once Bruno is inside of the camp, we see him comparing reality to the twisted version of what was shown in the film he saw his father watching. Can we go to the cafe or something? Cafe? Bruno begins to realize that Schmuel is not having fun at this camp after all, that he is in an actual prison of his own. This one misconception leads to the awful fate that both Bruno and Schmuel face at the end of the film. A very important and influential part of the film is the manner in which it is directed. Mark Herman, the director and screenwriter, used strong symbols to emphasize the valuable underlying messages the film attempts to convey. Right away, the viewer experiences Herman's creative filming techniques. They meet the grandma and see her clear favoritism for Bruno. Herman shows the grandma looking into a mirror to see Bruno behind her, a clear symbol that she and Bruno will be mirror images or parallels throughout the film as exemplified by the fatal ending the two share. The viewer also sees both Bruna and Elsa behind the bars of their staircase in their times of frustration. Bruno is shown sitting on the staircase when he first arrives at his new home. At this point, he is angry about moving and feels trapped in the situation. Elsa is shown behind bars further into the movie, particularly after she finds out about the bodies burning outside her home. 
It is interesting to note that Herman never shows the father or daughter behind the bars of the staircase. The father does not realize his imprisonment in the situation until he is directly affected by it, Bruno's death. Greta, the sister, is completely captivated in her world of Hitler. She is imprisoned by her naivete. The difference between Bruno and Elsa and Greta and the father is that Bruno and Elsa know and suffer from their imprisonment. Bruno attempts to break free from this imprisonment, which is also shown through the filming techniques. In one scene, Bruno is shown running through the forest, free from imprisonment of his home and family, and it almost looks as if he is flying through the trees. In this moment, Bruno feels as free as he will throughout the film. At first, the viewer sees two young boys in completely different situations, yet when looking at their lives in terms of imprisonment, one may see the two are alike in some ways after all. One thing the viewer may not notice throughout the whole film, as Herman is subtle with his symbols, is that Bruno is actually the boy in the striped pajamas. Without catching on to Bruno's sleep time apparel, the viewer will think it is Shmuel, because to Bruno, Shmuel is the boy in the striped pajamas. To Bruno, putting on so-called pajamas is all fun and games. It is no problem joining Shmuel on his side of the fence. His striped pajamas worn throughout the film foreshadow his unfortunate fate, one that could have been prevented in so many ways. A deeper message this film attempts to send is the effects of repudiating the severity and the reality of the Holocaust. Bruno's parents go along with his idea of the prisoners in the concentration camp wearing pajamas, giving him the impression that it is not a bad place. The father also seems to be trying to repress the actuality and cruelty of the Holocaust when he actually downplays the horrible acts to both his family and others. They are denying the existence of a concentration camp right next to their home just as people attempt to deny the Holocaust ever existed at all. Mark Herman made the themes in his film come alive through his visual symbolism. Without telling the viewer how significantly the family was affected by their experience, he was able to show them. The boy in the striped pajamas shows people the other side of the fence. Many Holocaust films focus on the terrors inside the camp, whereas this one shows the viewers the effects on the outside as well.